welcome to another video. Today I am going to be chatting about renovation decisions we made that we are so pleased with. This video could have been so long because I could talk all day about my house but I've decided to split it into two videos. So this one is going to be renovation decisions. It's anything that was in like the original design of the build of our house. Anything that required a contractor, electrician, plumber, builder to do. And then I'm also going to do an interiors decisions that we are so pleased with. And then that can be literally just kind of like cosmetic surface stuff that even if you're not planning a renovation project, you can still take inspiration or note from some of the decisions we made there. We completed our build a year ago now and we're not quite finished because even though Freddie doesn't believe me, we will never be finished. <laughs> I genuinely think you will never be finished when you do your house. There are always little touch-ups to be made. We're still working on the kind of cosmetic stuff, but the build is very much done. So I'm going to take you through a few of those things that I'm just so glad we did in the, the design and build phase. Okay, so once again I've made a little list on my phone and I'm going to be running through them and just kind of explaining why I love what we did. Okay, we're going to start with the kitchen and I actually think this room could have a whole video dedicated to itself because there was so much in here that we did and that we are pleased with. It is the room that we spend the most time in and it is like the heart of the home and it is, to me, it's probably the most important room in the house. It's where our guests spend a lot of time with us and it's where we cook and eat and just like two of my favourite things ever. So first up I'm going to talk about the heating system in the kitchen. We went for a wet underfloor heating system and it was the best decision ever because the room is 6.3 meters by 4.2 meters. We have three different functioning rooms in there. We have a kitchen, dining room and living area. That is not that large a space to cram three rooms in. So we are working with every single square inch of that room. When you start putting radiators on walls, it starts removing options of where you can place furniture. So by having blank walls to do whatever we want with and place TVs or sofas or dining tables or whatever, it has freed up so much space. If you are considering underfloor heating, it is totally worth the investment. If you're gonna do it in one room in the house, that, and then my second rooms would be, would be the bathrooms. We didn't do it in the bathrooms because the budget had run out, but I think that would be my second favorite area <laughs> to put, put the underfloor heating in. Another thing in the kitchen, the hot water tap. It is a cold and standard hot water, warm water tap, and it also, on the other side, has the boiling water function. It also has a built-in water filter as well. It uses so much less energy to boil the full tank to provide you instant hot water than it does in the cost of boiling a kettle. So I know it's an expensive investment, however if you are considering it, something to consider as well is that it does use less energy than boiling a kettle. So put it this way, I would never now consider doing a kitchen renovation and not put that in, so it will always be included in my kitchen renovation budget. They start at around £400 and they can go well into the thousands. Our Le Sosome one was 4 99 and it is an absolute dream. Just remember, if you are wanting to put a boiling water tap in, you need space under your sink for the boiling water heater. We do have a water softener, and that would be the next thing I would say that we are so pleased with. It's actually housed in our utility room, where the boiler is and the water point is in our house, and when the water comes into our house, it filters through the softener and then it comes through our taps, only some of our taps. All our showers, so the water that we wash with is softened water. All the bathroom taps, so cleaning our teeth, uh, washing our face. We live in a hard water area and that can be quite harsh on your skin and your hair. It's quite a large unit, so I would say that you, once again, you need the space near your water point in your house. We probably refill the salts every four to six months and it's about 20 pounds a bag so just to give you an idea of the running costs of having a water softener the water softener unit itself is about 500 pounds from memory i will link the one we have below but there are so many on the market so you have lots of choice with with what you're going with our plumber recommended this brand so 
we were happy with that. I would say that the one way we find out the water salts have run out in the water softener, because I'll tell you it's not something I check regularly, is because our black taps in the ensuite start to get milky white stains on them and it's where the, the chalky water and the hard water in this area stains the, the tapware. We know it's definitely working because Aside from when the salts have run out, we don't get any kind of build up around the taps. Whilst we are on the water softener that is in the utility room, that takes me on to the next renovation decision we are so pleased with, and that is putting in a utility room. If you have the space in your layout, please consider a utility room. Our utility room is 1.2 meters by 2 meters, so 2.4 meters squared. It houses so much. It's our boiler, water softener, all of that. We have the butler's sink. Winnie gets fed in here. All her dog food and stuff is kept in here. Washing machine, tumble dryer, double stacked. We keep all the hoover and ironing board and everything in here. It houses so much and it's all kept tucked away behind that pocket door. Very convenient having that kind of dumping ground of a room off the kitchen and also you can just shut the door when you have guests and it's all out of sight. Just so convenient and I would just highly recommend. So if you are thinking about a utility room that you might need one, you definitely do need one. <laughs> so the final thing in the kitchen, I did say this was taking up most of the video, I promise we're moving on now. <laughs> the final thing in the kitchen would be the island. I'm so glad that we created this island. It is such a huge focal point in the room. It's actually like the heart of the house. Um, Everyone gathers around this island, it's so sociable, and I think this is important to think about when you're designing your kitchen, how do you move and live in your home? Like, we love cooking, and we love having guests over and entertaining, so it just works so well. Also, making the decision to put the hob on the island as opposed to the sink, the sink is normally quite a popular one to put on there, which I really love having the hob on the island because you can cook and you can still socialise with people, whether that is your guests or whether it's just like Freddie sat at the, the breakfast bar. And I would say that I am so in love with the uh, quartz worktop that we picked. Originally, I decided on something very subtle with like the lightest, smallest grey vein. And then when we went to the Stone Depot with Max, I saw this stunning, striking kind of like marble vein through the quartz. And I just thought that that's the one, that's the statement piece. And it was the hands down the biggest investment in the whole refurb. And we knew we wanted to do quartz and we knew because it would have that wow effect and it's also the durability and quality of quartz. And I'm just so glad we kind of went with a, a more like adventurous <laughs> vein. I don't know if you can call it adventurous, but it has definitely got that wow factor. Like whenever you walk in the room it is like the first thing you're drawn to. And I think it contrasts lovely with the dark cabinets on the island. Now moving on to the hallway. I am so glad that we put a glass door in this hallway into kitchen area. We needed to put a door here for building control because in our kitchen, it's obviously a fire risk because it's an area where you cook food. We had to put a door here and it actually took me six months to pick the door. I just couldn't decide what I wanted. Considered the crittle look, uh, couldn't afford the crittle look, so considered the knockoffs, didn't like them. And then eventually just settled on this off the shelf, largest glass pane we could find. And then we just painted the trim the same color as the walls. So it just really blends in. What I love about it is that it allows lots of light from the kitchen to feed back into the hallway. We have a very dark hallway because there's no windows in it. Another thing that I absolutely love that we did in the hallway was we turned the understairs cupboard into the downstairs toilet. So it is a very tight space, but it works because we went for small sink and toilet, so not standard. It doesn't feel cramped because the furniture isn't too big for the room, if you know what I mean. I think that is a mistake that you can make in every room from the living room to the downstairs toilet. If you buy furniture that's too big, it's gonna just like crowd the space and not feel right. But because we went for this miniature sink and short depth projection toilet, it is perfect. And I mean, it serves its purpose. <laughs> it's so handy having a toilet on the ground floor. It's the first time we've ever had that. We've only ever had one bathroom in any where we've lived. 
Whilst we're talking about bathrooms, I will take you to the first floor bathroom and something that I'm so pleased we did here was this bathtub is smaller than your standard bathtub. So normally they're like 16 to 1700 wide. This is 1500 millimeters. And the reason I picked this is because it's not as wide. It's also got a much thicker rim than your thinner bathtubs. So the volume of water that goes in it is actually quite a bit less than your standard bathtub fill. So it's actually more cost efficient to fill your bathtub with hot water. Another reason is because, like what I said about furniture being too cramped in the room, I like to have a little bit of space either side of the bathtub and I just think that this fits the width of the room perfectly. We had to lose some space from one side of the wall because the wall wasn't even. They had to re-level the walls so that there's actually a partition wall on the left hand side of our bathroom. It does house all the cistern plumbing for the toilet and it also meant we lost a bit of space in the bathroom. Going for the smaller bathtub means we still managed to get that space either side. Another thing that we did in both bathrooms was we bought the largest shower screen possible. So with the bathroom trays came a 700 millimeter shower screen and we sold them on Facebook Marketplace and then we bought 1.2 meter shower screens and it just means less water splashing out of the shower area and also it just looks more elegant. It was actually my builder who recommended that and I think it was such a great tip and he was completely right. So I'm passing on <laughs> that information that I learned because I would have just gone with the, the small shower screen and the larger one looks so much better. Another thing my builder did, he put in the bathrooms that didn't have wall tiles, he put little upstands of cut tile to look like a skirting board and I just think that it's a really nice finished look to the bathroom and it's something I wouldn't have ever thought of myself and I think it looks great. If you are designing a bathroom, um, you might want to consider that as well. Last thing I would say for the bathrooms is make sure you consider shaver points, so for charging electric toothbrushes and like water flosses and stuff, we have them in the bathroom, the one in the main bathroom is hidden behind the cupboard and then the one in the ensuite is just to the side of the shelves and it's just so handy to charge your toothbrush in your bathroom and not in the hallway on the floor where everyone trips over it and the dog eats the toothbrush. Definitely consider that. Another thing to consider, I would say, is having walk-in sensor lighting. So it's just an LED strip that you can stick under a bathroom unit or a shelf, a low hung shelf. And it just means in the middle of the night, if you go to the toilet and you walk in, that will come on and you don't actually have to put the full lights on. I think that's just like quite a nice touch. We did it in our previous bathroom, in our flat renovation, and we completely forgot to do it in this reno. And I'm so annoyed. It's such a lovely touch in the bathroom. A few final things I would say. If you are tight for space and your budget allows, then I would 100% put pocket doors in where you can. So we have it in the utility and we have it in the ensuite. And they just free up so much space that a swing door would take up. And I think they look really chic. They slide into the wall. They are such good space savers, but yes, they do cost a fair bit more money. It's just a standard door, but it's the cost of the frame and the track that it sits on. It's more work and it's more cost, but it's totally worth it. I would always recommend a pocket door, a sliding door into the wall if you are tight on space. Another thing you have to consider is electrics. So I'm so glad that we did bedroom wall lights in, in here because we have a very low ceiling in this room and hanging any kind of light would just kind of draw attention to the ceiling and how low it is. And also we couldn't actually put any cables in the ceiling because we have used up all the space we could with just height. So there's no cabling above our ceiling in here. So we did the wall lights and what comes with that is you need to plan exactly where your bed is gonna go if you want the lights to be either side of your bed. So, you know, think it's gonna be a double or a king or a super king, those wall lights need to be exactly where you want them to be and that is above your bedside table or within the vicinity of the bedside table. You need to think about this in the first fix of the electric. So you're, you're thinking like really soon on into the project. First fix electrics is done like when it's still pretty much a shell of a building and they're still putting all the wires behind the walls. 
So have a think about that early on. And also, I would definitely recommend doing is, if it is wall lights in the bedroom, put a switch next to the bed so you don't need to get out of bed to turn the lights off. So handy <laughs> when you're going to sleep. <laughs> I know I've mentioned it a million times, but I'm so pleased that we did the exposed beams in this room. So we lacked so much head height here because we are in a planning restricted area, so we couldn't do the extension any higher and it meant that our head height in this room is two meters. So by keeping the beams exposed, it just gave a little bit more of visual height. You do need to follow building control regulations still. We have a special fire resistant paint on them, so just make sure you are following guidelines if you do kind of want to do something that's kind of out of the ordinary of standard building. A few final building details that I would say definitely go with the largest windows you can afford in terms of budget and space. For example, in this bedroom, it's north facing and it only has one space for a window and we had the windows made to measure with Klar windows. So much cheaper than anywhere else we could find. They're really good quality aluminium frame windows. The window in this room takes up the full space a window could physically take up. There's a little bit of space to the side which is, is just like the structure of the, the room. We did the biggest window we could so we could get as much light into this room as possible. If you are doing a build from scratch where you do get to pick windows then really consider if you can afford more window light. Just there's nothing better than natural light flooding into your space. We obviously did a loft renovation so this used to be our attic and it's now an additional bedroom office and bathroom. If you do have any space in the eaves where maybe you wouldn't be able to have a physically functioning room, I would really recommend doing built-in storage because just think about the fact that you've lost your attic space, which usually is storage space, so you're always going to want to have ample storage and there's going to be stuff you want to hide away. So we just did a row of cupboards and they go back about four feet and it's actually really handy. Definitely think about additional storage and wherever there's an eaves or an under the stairs cubby that you can turn into another cupboard, do it. My final point, this was something our architect recommended to us. If you are building an additional floor and you're having to build another staircase, really try and stack your staircases. It just means that usable space on those floors is much better used for rooms than more staircases and landings. We considered our loft staircase in other areas of the first floor and it just meant that we would have to do additional landing space which ate into the size of the rooms on the first floor so if you stack your staircases it just means ample space for bedrooms and other rooms so it's definitely something to consider. And that is it from me. I'm sure there's a hundred more things I could talk about because we're so happy with so many things, so there might be a part two, there'll definitely be an interiors edition of this, so stay tuned for that, and if you have any questions then just pop them in the comments and I'll answer them, and thank you so much for watching another one of my videos, and I will see you next time, bye!